All right, we've come now to the final step. You now know all your birds, and you're very good at identifying them, theoretically. I'm still not a champ. I'm pretty good, though, I like to think. But here's the thing. Uh, sometimes what people find helpful is binoculars. I'm not one of those people because I have a problem where I get really fidgety with my hands. So I'm always messing around with like the focus and the ocular, like uh, the little ocular adjuster that you have. Cause you have the center one and then you have the one, there's one for your eye that's even closer. And I just mess around with them and stuff all the time. I'm terrible with binoculars. My ace in the hole, the monocular. One, important, it makes you feel like a pirate which is never a bad thing. Um, this is the Polaris uh, mon monocular. Um, I'm very excited to use it. Uh, whoo, it's very exciting. It's got a lot of different ways to focus. It's also waterproof, which is critical. Um, but I'm very, very excited to use it. Uh, I highly recommend it. It came very, very quickly from Amazon, so I'm sure if you had some sort of thing like Amazon Prime, it comes in a little case. Also, don't forget to bring cleaner for your monocular or binocular. Um, however, I do a lot of birding by just uh, by using my eyes. Oh, it also came with this little cute tripod, which was sweet. I don't know when I'm going to use a tripod in the jungle, but I'm down. That sounds great. Um, but I use, use mostly use my eyes and then take the uh, monocular and focus it in uh, once I've sort of found what I'm looking at. Um, I can give more information about how to better use binoculars and things like that once we get there. Uh, my biggest tip would be to never try and track a bird while you're where while you've got your binoculars or monocular up because it'll give you motion sickness potentially and you could throw up. It's never never good. Um, but I have a lot of resources for everybody. Uh, Xenocanto is a great bird website. It's essentially an encyclopedia of bird song. You type what bird you're looking for and it'll pull up a whole bunch of all, pretty much all of the recorded songs that you can submit. Um, I also highly recommend if you want to practice birding uh, in your own backyard for the time being, uh, the Merlin app from uh, Cornell Lab of Ornithology. That's free for iPhones and Androids. And starts to help you, starts to give a good idea of what to be looking for. So it gives you size options, so small or big like a goose, and it'll give you options in between. It also takes the GPS location from your phone, so it's cross-referencing that with eBird, uh, which is another resource I'll talk about in just a second. Um, it'll cross-reference, so I'm in New Orleans, so it'll, my phone is talking to Merlin and is saying, she's in New Orleans, she's at Audubon Park. Uh, she saw a bird the size of a goose. It was all white because it has you pick three colors. It was all white and had a little bit of orange and a little bit of black. And it asked you what the bird was doing, and I would say swimming. And they'd be like, you saw the mute swan at Audubon Park. Was this your bird? And you could say, oh, yeah, that was it. Um, so it's free, and it's a really great resource. I highly recommend it for any kind of backyard birding at all. Uh, but that brings us, what was the other one? Oh, eBird. Um, I've already done this because I spoke with Perky on the phone about my paper because I was struggling. And she told me that uh, she wanted to see a resplendent Quetzal. And I have always liked Quetzal since I was a kid. And they've sort of fallen off my radar. But um, I am working on becoming a better birder to find a resplendent Quetzal in the wild because I think that would be awesome. Um, but to do this, the best way for me to do this would be to look at all the places we're going to visit. So specifically Monteverde. Um, last year, so eBird, let me tell you about eBird. So eBird logs all of your, the sightings. So you would have to go online with your login and submit something and say like, I, Aiden Bailey, saw, um, I saw a resplendent Quetzal on this day in this location this, you can add a picture, you can add a comment, um, and it's all very, very helpful. And then they track it, so I, it would say that it has the date. So I checked for Splendid Quetzals. I checked actually all of July in Monteverde. And last year in July, they saw four Splendid Quetzals. So who knows? Uh, I have, fingers crossed. Um, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. But I definitely recommend checking out eBird so you have an idea of what you might see, uh, checking out years past, because 
birds, if they find a nice territory, might stick around. Uh, what else? Um, I'm always around to answer anybody's bird questions. Again, I highly recommend if you have a chance, go visit the Cornell Lab of Ornithology website. They have a ton of information about bird songs and bird identification. Um, my biggest Tip in terms of birding goes is as excited as I am to see a resplendent Quetzal, no matter what birds I see, they're going to be special. Uh, I have a birder friend who goes out birding, and if he does not see the bird he went out to see, like a boreal owl or something like that, he's just like a grumpy gills. And so I don't want anybody to ever be disappointed, but every bird is special and every sighting is special. So keep your eyes on the skies, and I can't wait to meet everybody in Costa Rica. Uh, I'll see you on the 17th. Less than a week. Uh, but I'll see you then. Bye.